Uh, let's see how it goes right now. It's getting a lot of audio playback. Let's see how it goes right now. It's getting a lot of audio playback. Let's see how it goes right now. It's getting yeah, a lot I'm of still getting it. Playback. Let's see how it goes right now. It's getting yeah, I'm still getting it. Playback. Let's see how it goes right now. It's getting I'm still getting it. Playback. Let's see how it goes. How about now? How about now? Yeah, what was happening was kind of weird. But, uh, all right, well, welcome. My name is Bernard Chang. Hopefully we'll get this uh, going. This is a new setup today. Um, we got a, uh, let me do a little digital coloring on the Photoshop. <coughs> My co-host Sean Chen. Sean Chen is um, we're both professional comic book artists. Sean Chen is currently hey, drawing. I can't hear you. You can't hear me. Can people on stream hear me? I'm on the Discord. I'm going to disconnect from the Discord. Okay, now I'm reconnected again on Discord. Can you hear me? So he says, uh, Yoji says you can hear me, but you're low. Um, Sean? Oh, yes. Yeah. Say something? Um, can you hear me now? Yes. What about now? Sean? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm here. How's that, Yoji? Too Hello? woke? <laughs> Too woke? <laughs> yes, better, Sean. Okay. All right. Whoo! This is a brand new setup today. Had to remove all the lights, move all the green, move the green screen. Uh, I... Next one or one of one of the other streams coming up, I'll give you guys a little tour of the studio. But I have two different workstations. One is uh, my drawing desk. It's a high drawing desk. It's where I do all the traditional drawing. And then I have this second setup, perpendicular to that. It's a different separate table, uh, different iMac. Uh, this one's a better iMac, 27 inch. So I just got it like a year ago. Got a Cintiq on here. Got another old uh, cinema display, and I got my seven, 11 by 17 scanner. Um, so I had to kind of rearrange uh, the layout. Let's see. Uh, but if the audio is good, Crispy Papa, welcome. Thanks for joining. I think Sean, uh, you posted up a. Um, oh yeah, my um, my Batman Beyond sketch that we're giving away tonight. Okay. It's up on Instagram. It's, um, Instagram is Sean Chen Art, which I think you already. <laughs> I think I saw you guys on there already. Look, commenting on it. And uh, today, let's see. Let's come to a complete stop here. We're let's get rid of the red alert. I have to completely redo everything. Let's uh, come to a stop here on the space. Hmm. Photoshop's not working. See what's happening here. Oh, there we go. Yeah, on that uh, sketch, that's the very tricky uplighting. It's, it's also uplighting on a completely black colored figure, which is tough to do. So, oh, let me get, let me pull up your, uh, let me pull up your, your Batman Beyond sketch so people can see. So are you coloring the Wonder Woman today? I think I'm gonna do the Wonder Woman. Spend like about an hour on it. Um, cool. Copy link. 
my Christy Turlington looks. I'm surprised I, anyone knows who that is. Okay. Look at this. All right. So this way, at least I think I can. You'll be able to see. Hopefully, you guys will be able to see. Can you see the cursor on here? Can you see if I? Yes. Okay. All right. I liked and disliked and liked again. Unliked it. <laughs> All right. So here we go. This is going to be. We're going to try to <clears throat> throw this out later. Nice. That's a really nice one. How long did you spend on that? It was. Well, it's only a waste up shot. It was like maybe an hour and a half. Oh, how come we got like a double? Whoa! Look at that. Yeah. What's going on there? <laughs> oh, cause uh, it's the browser. The it's reading the browser. That's why you're getting the the uh, all those multiple screens. Okay. Oh, Joshua did the Ryan Benjamin workshop. Is that like you gotta you gotta pay for that, or is that like a Patreon thing? Hey, Blair, how you doing? Way high, why high, way too woke, crispy, Yoji. Uh, yeah, you got to pay for that. That's him and the uh, Wilts Portacio. Oh wow! How long was the boot? Well, how long was the boot camp? Like oh, uh, wow. those are those are two great teachers. I mean, I mean, you should, you're in good hands there. Hey Barry, how's it going? You know, I noticed uh, on your Batman Beyond. Oh, what now? Uh, well, when I first started drawing Batman Beyond, I had drawn, I had done a couple of pages, and uh, I had drawn like his wings independent of his arms, of his body, as if the wings were, um, you know, separate, you know, controllable kind of armature. Yeah. Right. Uh, and it was cool because he was like flying and I thought oh, okay he's flying so then one wing could like go up and down versus opposite of his arms and stuff like that um, but then like the editor at the time was like oh you can't do that so they made me reconfigure redraw so that throughout my run the wing was part and I just kind of fit it into how I drew the, the wing was an extension from his arm connected down to his torso so it's always attached it was always attached yeah it could never oh, be it wasn't it's separate it was mine always... attaches sometimes <laughs> right so. it's attached sometimes but sometimes it's not and i've seen other people draw it unattached now more so um it's very limiting when it's attached i mean sometimes it it is yeah but i've used it like a like a blade so like if he's flying and he's going like this with his arm um you know, it's it's almost like it's like a like a like a weapon that he can use, and it kind of comes out this way too, right? Um, but it just yeah. goes to show you, like uh, these, uh, you know, different editors have different um, different. Uh, yeah, and on edicts. this book, I uh, I went through, I think maybe four editors. Um, because all the turmoil and changeover, some of the editors were on for only like a uh, maybe one issue, and then it switched. Wow. All right, let me move this. Uh, there we go. So I guess there's a lot of um, aspiring artists in in the chat because I didn't know if you guys were just like um, fans or whether you guys wanted to draw. Um, I guess we didn't really know how much of the art instruction to do and the, talking about process or you just want to, you know, talk about comics as, as fans. But. Yeah, I think eventually, like some of these streams will do like a portfolio review. Um, this is Joshua, if you have like samples, like storytelling samples, uh, we're more than happy to... 
oh my god i remember at these shows people will bring up their portfolio and bernard never refuses anyone but the problem is you give like sometimes one or two hour long portfolio reviews and yeah you, you got drawings to do so I mean, you're a better man than me because when they come by to me i was like oh that looks fantastic keep it up and then i get back to my drawing but then you would talk to them for like a couple of hours that's all stemming from uh, the traumatic uh yes well you know experience. that person yeah that traumatic experience a guy um i actually went to a convention in seattle with Kurt Busiek during my iron man run and um it was a convention where they had like only seven professionals there one of them was that guy and uh, i was telling Kurt Busiek, he's like i'm afraid to talk to that guy because bernard has a kind of story that he told me i just don't want to be hurt or anything um and kurt's like no no it's fine watch this and then we were at the breakfast at the hotel, and then he saw that guy sitting by himself, reading a book while eating his breakfast. Um, and we thought he looked kind of lonely, so Kurt was like, hey, why don't you come over here and join us? And he's like, no, I'm good here. <laughs> so you didn't get a review from him either? No, I wasn't looking for a review, but I mean, I thought he would just come over and just chat a bit, but he's the guy can be kind of like, you know, <laughs> Was this uh, a little aloof? Was this before or after uh, he made it even bigger? <laughs> I, I, th I, I think he was already big. Before, before or after his movie came out? Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, that's before. Oh, before his movie came out? Whoa. Yeah. Wow, so forget it now. All right. So usually what I do on uh, some of these things is uh, I typically have the line art layer. I can't really see the... Wow. Mr. Joshua is returning to art after an 18-year hiatus. <laughs> I can't really see the layers. You can kind of see the layers there. Uh, this one, I'm just keeping the line art independent. Um, I think I'm going to do a little kind of course yeah. correction. I guess usually when, when you color art for comics, it's, it's inked. So this is, has uh, gray tones in it. It has really nice gray tones in it already. So I was like wondering what approach you would do. Because a lot of times when you have the gray tones in there they just put like a flat filter of a color in there <coughs> yeah, this is, uh, set this to oh, we got someone's art coming up in the discord oh, i gotta turn on my discord Ooh, who's that Oh, that's Mr. Joshua stuff. Wow, you colored it? Is this your own story? Hmm. Um, <clears throat> the Roka wants to know whether we worked in games. <clears throat> I, oh. I personally haven't, not, not really. I used to work at Disney Interactive. Is that is that games? That's games. Yeah, I mean, it's got to be better than the comics industry. I mean, comics is kind of really messed up. Um, like, what's a what's a what's a big what's a big uh, what's a big uh, video game company these days? Riot Games is pretty big, right? What else? Is Activision still around? Are they still... Um, I mean, my, layout, my story about corporate layoffs, I was at Disney Imagineering. I mean, interactive at first, and they were doing CD-ROM games for the most part. Um, 
but they're still around. They're actually, I think, doing quite well. Um, Make havoc so he's not getting sure. any video. Um, is anybody else having that problem? I can see. It's actually better than before. I think your new system is much better. Well, this is a better computer. So the processor is like, this is like a 20, 2018, 2019 computer. And you got to use this computer all the time. And uh, I mean, it's the same camera, the same lighting. Well, although the lighting's a little shifted, it's actually a little closer. But the processing speed on this computer is a lot better. How is it better? It's just more... It's it's super clear. Oh, really? And, yeah. and then you, usually your beard is like all pixelated. But it, it's well, actually handling the little, green screen pretty well. Yeah, it's still a little, yeah, some of that is the lighting. Um, I got the lighting on me real close. The other one is about maybe four or five feet away because I got the table in between. This one is like literally like right here. I'm like that guy in the white shirt with the sunglasses. Like the lighting's like right there in my face. So what are you doing to that one woman? I mean, it's already done, but you're going over it in blue. Uh, yeah, because I wanna I wanna bring a shoulder in a little bit, so I wanna make sure that um, I'm kind of going in right now, uh, making sure the anatomy is is correct. Um, uh, so how are you gonna correct it though? Um, I will probably transform it. Okay, so you can like uh, lasso and yeah. and then jog it over. I want to make sure that everything is kind of copacetic. Um, yeah, I notice when you cover, uh, you, when you color your covers, you remove the holding line, so there's no um, ink line. Yeah, a lot. Of, that's that's an easy thing to do. You know, yeah, but I mean, is that something you wanted? I mean, you would do it for effect, right? Because I know, like, real life doesn't have outlines, but yeah, because I, I, what I, mean, I do is you can kind of see on here. I'm making the, um, I should turn off the air conditioning. This is creating like a hum in the back room. I do this where like a layer over the line art, you can kind of see, I hold an option key and then that bounds the, um, uh, I'm to go back and that bounds the, This creates like a masking layer. But if I want to hold the line, let's say I'm going to make all the line of her brown. I do like a screen. So that way now it's it's already softer, right? Oh cool. So I don't have to go in there. I don't. I very rarely use the mouse when I'm coloring uh, in Photoshop or uh, Procreate. Mouse. <laughs> well, you know, you got guys that use the mouse, uh, like they select the Adam, area. And... Adam Hughes. I think he colored with a mouse for a long time. Oh, really, Adam Hughes? Yeah. And David Peterson still uses a mouse. Well, like like guys like I think Alex Sinclair. Those guys they they use the. The mouse were they selecting shapes um, for selecting shapes but they but they don't color with it right no i think they still color with it with a mouse yeah and oh then they do God. gradients um i should erase my erase my uh signature up here oh we got some from south korea here oh who's from south korea are you so Maybe it's a lady. Kazuto is Kazuto's not here today. From from Brazil, and uh, we don't have Isaac. And we would have like an international. Um, what time over there is it over there? It's like daytime. It's like noon over there in Korea. Yeah. Right. So right now it's just kind of like generic colors. Um. So why do you remove the outline? I mean, I know how you, I mean, you can do it, but I mean, that's a, a choice that you make because it looks more. Yeah, it looks a little real. softer. It makes it a little softer. Um, 
But I want to. The key is also if you want to see stuff that you don't know, that you don't like, uh, you really reduce the size a little bit. So I'm gonna. Roy Batty, what is scroll paper signatures? And make havoc is still having problem with this video. Havoc. Is anybody else having problems with the video? Make havoc. Maybe you gotta pay that internet bill. <laughs> <laughs> And the video is actually super clear. I've never, I'm not used to it being so, so it's, clear. It's like I'm in your, it's like I'm right next to you. Like I'm in your <laughs> living room. This is like a regular stream now. <laughs> it's pretty professional. Man. We're getting up there. Thanks to Yoji and you guys, everybody contributing advice every now and then, um, helping us out. So if I'm moving these shapes, a lot of times I like to copy paste them. I'm not transforming them yet. Um, oh yeah. So that what that I am now. And the only reason I copy trace is uh, I mean copy paste is that it gives me an opportunity to keep what I have built behind to kind of gauge. So you know moving the shoulders in a little bit. Um, oh now you see Bernard's doesn't get it right the first time all the time. It's all smoke and mirrors. It's uh, it's it's magic. Like look over here, look over here, and then I'm over here. Oh, I should bring this up. That way you guys can see what I'm doing. Oh, Chris Bear goes in and out tonight. Crispy won a sketch, now he's gone. <laughs> he knows he's down to one slice, so there's no point. <clears throat> Boy, you guys are really, like, hoping, uh... You guys are really rooting for Suli to win that horse sketch yesterday. <laughs> I mean, at least she really... I, th I think she wanted it, right? Oh, yeah, and she absolutely really wanted it. She's... I mean, she loves animals, and she has a very quirky taste, which is kind of cool. She's not like a cookie-cutter type fan, so, yeah, she really was into it. Okay, so I'm kind of cool with the, so I'm not going to merge them. You can kind of see what it looks like before. Right. I can't get over how I, I almost didn't notice, but you draw the women faces really different now. Um, I mean, it's, it's well, I, I guess I've learned some like very conventional type things. You know, like I, I suffer from the same face syndrome. I'll admit, like I'll draw, I'll find the formula for a female face that looks the best. And I kind of, it's hard to deviate from it because, um, you know, it, it's like, uh, it's risk to, to deviate from that formula, but I think you used to make things hard on yourself by doing things that I think are kind of counterintuitive when it comes to like a, a woman's face. If you're trying to make the, the most beautiful woman, um, you would put the eyes kind of up higher on the head, which kind of, you know, could make them look older. You would have a, a longer nose and it's not a ski jump nose. Like you would think that the ski jump nose is the kind of like the beauty standard. But you would sometimes do the hook nose or like the, you know, the Pocahontas type nose, which is exotic and, and um, all those things together. And sometimes even a larger chin, but you would make it all work. It's like, well, that's a really beautiful woman, even though it's kind of like breaking all the rules that I kind of come to discover. But now you're kind of more in line. I mean, like the nose is much shorter than before. Yeah, and, well, and it is a ski jump nose. I noticed that before. A lot of my no, those are, those are very long, especially when I was drawing. When I was drawing Wonder Woman, I drew her nose to be very long, and but it, it's it's very classy, you know. It's like very um Grecian or whatever. Yeah, at the time I'm thinking like Amazon, you know, the particular region, 
uh, a particular kind of, I don't know, uh, facial features. But some of some of the noses were just too long. I think I got too stylized. I just got too long. So. If you guys are interested, just the guys that are just jumping on to the stream, you can actually see this pencil sketch a couple of episodes earlier. I think it was like maybe 12 or 13. So right now I'm just kind of playing around with it. Probably have a bunch of different layers. These are all shadow layers. So I'm using these as uh, um, wow, well, you have multiply. a you have a bunch of layers going on already. <laughs> I like to keep things in different layers at first, just to kind of get a gauge. Um, if I don't like it, then I can always Actually, I should do, usually do a base color. I should just merge these two together. And do, this should be a base, base color. Typically, when you're working on a, on a book or a cover, um, After the line art's done, you send this to the colors. The colors usually have a flatter. And the flatter will be someone... In Korea. <laughs> well, I mean, it depends on where. I mean, Marcello's in Brazil. So his flatter is in Brazil. Why is that? Yoji asks how often you get the color. I personally don't color that much. Um, sometimes, you know, on covers, I get the color a little bit, um, depending on the cover. I just did actually a, a fully painted cover for Humanoids. Um, that was a lot of fun. And, uh, and it's a little bit of a different style than normal because it's fully painted. Um, so I drew it traditionally uh, with, like, line art, like how I would draw it. Um, for a regular comic book, but then I colored it as if I was digitally painting it. Uh, it was okay, you know? There was other things that I maybe wanted to, was initially thinking in my head what I wanted to do, uh, but didn't necessarily uh, accomplish yeah, Maybe we need to um, define some terms here. When you're talking about a flatter, I think the primary goal of a flatter is just to cut up the the sections of color so you're not really making color choices but you uh, it's kind of very obvious where the color borders are or like uh, you know like the skin meets the shirt you, just to separate the skin from the shirt a, a flatter will just dump in a flat color in the shirt and then dump in a flat color for the skin and that way but when bernard comes in since his time is money he can just click on that he'll select the whole area that's been colored and then you, most likely you would switch the color to the right color because the flatter is just putting in any any color yeah. all you're doing is just basically isolating uh, an object that's good uh, so all they're doing yeah, is so really just yeah. punching out the shapes because this is it's not this is what they're doing right we're just getting these shapes in there so right so and that's a important but tedious job it's important and tedious but also very easy so it's good to outsource that like like i know some like in a real pinch someone can outsource an entire book to like someone in Korea for very cheap and then they'll flat the entire book and then when you get it sometimes you can spend as little as like half an hour or 15 minutes on a page you can click through all the selections that that person made and then turn the hot pink flesh into what the flesh that you want the right color and then you have to put in all the, the modeling and shading and the highlights and shadows <clears throat> so those are the artistic decisions that that um that you do and it's kind of like a waste of your time to flat because it's it's a takes a long time. Yeah, I mean, uh, finding a page is probably like, what, 45 minutes to an hour. If you're really, really intent on getting every single piece, uh, 
this, this one, one again we're moving kind of fairly quickly uh, because also it's still a sketch we're just trying to keep this as uh, still have a loose feel to it we don't want it to be too too finished or too polished I don't think that's the intent of this piece um, so uh, let me see Barry's asking who are some of our favorite colorists well, my I think this is Marcello. Marcello 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 oh, yeah. yeah Marcello's been on you f on your stuff for like years now since yeah. um, Teen Titans or before since uh, Demon Knights oh, Demon so, Knights yeah. okay and um, you treat your colors very well I mean you take them out to lunch and everything like that yeah. <laughs> that's well, cool whenever I've been to Brazil twice, twice well, well look you know, know colors a lot of times they make or break um they can make or break a project and um, and they work very hard and they don't get a lot of appreciation um, yeah I mean the the good ones do a fantastic job yeah. and there's tons of bad ones out there and they can change your drawing I mean uh, I mean you do the drawing like the, the pencil and inking stage and it kind of describes generally the form but then the third leg to describing that form is in the colorist's hands and if he can draw as well as you can, then you're in good shape. But most of the time, they're just kind of like, uh, you know, dividing the border between the lights and shadows in the wrong place, and then your face just all of a sudden is out of whack, and it basically ruins all your work. But you kind of have to understand that that's what happens is comics, it's assembly line, and you kind of put up with it. But in a rare situation where you have one that can actually um, <clears throat> sculpt a figure and, and build off what you're doing in, in a good way and doesn't detract from what you do, kind of like hang on to that guy and, and he's uh, fast yeah you know, he's yeah. fast he's able to turn around stuff um there have been there have been a couple of times where we're like right under the gun and um basically i'm also jumping in and uh doing some renders um oh yeah we should talk like before like i guess when you couldn't always trust your colors you would um, pencil it and ink it, and then you would do like a, a, sh a shadow pass where yeah. you take the gray, you just basically gray tone the, uh, at least the figures or the, if not the entire page, uh, and then let the colorist basically go in there and you know, they can select the colors, but the, the sculpting from the shadows is already in there, so they can't really mess that up. Right, and then I've, I've done, done that, that too, too, and then, and then, then the, the colorist goes, goes in and redoes the colors, I mean redoes the shadows. shadows. And I'm like, dude, I just spent like an extra hour or two. Um, yeah, I mean, who are they kidding? I mean, <laughs> you know, there's no way that you're going to be able to define the shape better than. Um, I mean, let's just be real. I mean, it's. <laughs> I mean, if you can draw that well, then then, then be a penciler. <laughs> so. My head's getting kind of big because I'm leaning in. <sighs> But, uh, oh, Barry says there's an echo coming from your microphone. I'm hearing you on Discord, so. There's an echo from my phone? From my microphone? From your microphone. On me? Do you think it's picking up my head? No, I don't think it's my headphone. It's a slight echo, echo. It's the voice of God, that's why. What, what about, about now? now? <clears throat> what about now? Okay, Weihai is asking how to... Um, They're all on different I guess, layers. Yeah, it's a different layer. So there's a thing called multiply. So it's hard to explain, but your uh, his pencil lines or his ink lines are kind of like, you can imagine it drawn on white paper. And then the coloring is not on that same paper it's on a layer so that layer is the equivalent of if you know what acetate is like saran wrap the colors are being applied uh onto a saran wrap basically and they're clear so you can see through the saran wrap and then see this pencil lines underneath so it's almost like doing a stained glass um so that's a cool thing about uh, photoshop is that with all the layering 
it's it makes things a lot easier because uh, you can uh, isolate different layers. Um, and I think you know with Bernard, it's got like already like six layers going. Yeah, you can have know. one layer for shadows and one layers for for highlights. I mean, this is the original and, layer. This is the original drawing layer, and I duplicated it onto this layer, and I darkened up the line work a little bit. You can kind of see it's a little darker. Right, and then I'm starting to do the flat. Yeah, so the, the coloring is done on this kind of like an acetate layer, so that whenever you put a color on top, it becomes like a see-through. So you can see all the black lines underneath. What about now? Can you? Is there an echo now? <laughs> Sounds good now. Okay, so I think what happened was I might have had another set up another audio, um, another audio input, and that was on. So maybe that was like catching, catching too. Thank you guys. Thank you guys for helping fine tune this. Without you, we would be like uh, mm, uh, mm, uh, two Neanderthals. Uh, what's this? Mm. So you can see like uh, how hard it would be to do this same thing with oil paints, where it's kind of harder to do any type of layer stuff. You're basically mixing shadow and light right on the canvas. See, this is like not very. You see how the you know the star and the the tiara. Thank you for the whatever just happened. I haven't loaded the follower subscription little thing yet. So, but thank you, whoever that was. Um, so. The the la well, I'm calling it an acetate layer, but the tool is called. It's basically a layer called multiply. Or it's, multiply, you yeah. just make a layer, and then you can have these layer properties that you assign to it. So when you um. When you start a layer, it says, what would you like this layer to be like? And you, you pick one that, that says multiply. And that multiply will turn it into like a acetate. Uh, and that way, you can color right on top of your black line work and not obscure it. And I'm using um, like a fade brush. It's not a, it's like a fade brush. But then, um, can you, oh, you guys can't see, you guys can't see the, the pop-up. <laughs> Uh, and then I have the settings on that so that it's uh, the pressure tip and the pressure of the pen um, that will be the opacity. Um, I mean, there is a regular pen. I can just use a regular pen, and then you get a straight get. But I'm gonna use that later um, when I do some more finishings. So. Um, so this is kind of an issue though, because you did a lot of the shading with uh, with graphite, and uh, one thing I know about that is that when you're doing a female face and then you shaded it with pencil, those lines are kind of black or gray, uh, or they're gray basically. Then you put a, a warm skin tone on top, and then that gray shading is not the color of the shadow. It would end up looking like dirt. <laughs> so. Um, at some point, you have to colorize that uh, all the or remove the pencil shading. Yeah, well, right now, um, right now, this is I think it's a little bit too too bright or too opaque, too opacity is too the saturation is too much. Um, One thing I noticed, if you ever see um, process videos of Drew Struzan, who used to do. Um, posters a long time ago, like a painted posters for movies. He would do this, uh, the equivalent technique uh, traditionally. So he would draw a super accurate pencil drawing. I think you might use like a black Prismacolor uh, with all the shading in there so that it's, uh, it's, it's shadowed. And then you'll take an airbrush and then spray a flat skin tone over it. So it's the equivalent of a multiply layer in Photoshop where you can see through it because it's sprayed on in a light layer and you can see the pencil lines underneath. So um, that's basically how he gets uh, that done. On I've noticed though, but before he sprays any of the paint on, there'll be like a cover with men and women on it. 
and sometimes men, women, and children, all the men, is, they're shaded in regular pencil. But then when he's drawing the women, he would... What happened, Sean? Sean, you cut out. Is it just me or did Sean just cut out? Can you guys hear me? Sean's gone. Sean! Sean! <laughs> Let me text him. Come back, Sean. Oh, shit. Oh, fuck. <sighs> uh, his computer froze. So, uh, he'll be back on in a little bit. What was he saying before? Drew Struzan? He's going to have to finish that because I don't know what he... Uh, I don't know much about Drew Struzan. But, uh... I mean, if we're talking about, like, drawing or coloring women or female characters, uh, you tend to... He's restarting his computer. You tend to want... The fewer lines, the better. Um, the more lines you draw, in particular on a face or on a body... Um, even when it comes to hatching or feathering or shadowing, uh, it makes, uh, it gives the women, female characters, uh, they look a little bit older. So if you're drawing younger teenagers or younger Wonder Woman, you know, like it, maybe if it's Hippolyta, Wonder Woman's mother, you know, maybe there'd be a little bit more definition. Uh, but that's kind of a, a rule of thumb. Not always the, the case. Again, rules... Rules are made to be broken, but at the same time, um, to be aware of it uh, might help. So what I did too, you guys see, I went in and I closed out. Um, I closed out the. I drew a line here, closed it out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete all this white space behind her. Um, from the pencil drawing. Um, that way I think uh, I get some more nuances. If I wanted to go in and add it later, I can. But basically I'm creating a masking layer from this one line art layer. I don't even know if this is the correct terminology, but Also got to rename it line art. Okay, Sean does need a new computer. I mean, he just got a flat screen TV like a couple years ago, and before that he had those big, he had a big like tube one, and it wasn't even that big of a TV. I think it was like a thirty-five inch TV. So, um, I mean, I think he just got an iPhone like two or three years ago too. When I went to his house, I was like completely shocked seeing him hold an iPhone. Um, but maybe you guys can convince him to, you know, step up his tech game. Um, but he's got he's got two kids, you know, so he's got other priorities. Um, I just got the the two birds, so the two birds they're not a they're not that huge of a financial drain. Um, seeds aren't that expensive. Ooh, thank you, somebody. Something just happened. Um, Should be back on soon. So right now I'm just cleaning up a little bit. I mean, we'll go back in there later. Um, you can also I have a layer underneath. Uh, make it a hundred. 
100% opacity depending on the because this, this layer back here, we can change to any color we want. That'll give us an idea of what we're working with. I mean, originally, he's oh, he's back. Originally, this, this new computer, this iMac that I got, I, was, I bought it specifically for streaming because the other one is a late 2012 iMac. Um, and it was only a 21 inch this is a 27 inch um, but I hooked it up to work with the Cintiq and because uh, the Photoshop 2 I'm running off of this is the subscription 2020 Photoshop version so the iMac 2012 version late 2012 uh, I'm still on El Capitan on that one <laughs> so um Hesitant because on that one I I, I have Photoshop uh, CS3, you know I bought the CDs. Um, I've been buying them since Photoshop uh, Creative Suite One, um, so I run that on my um, iMac 2012. Welcome back, Sean. Welcome back to uh, what happened? There? I froze up. You know I'm on El Capitan also. You gotta um, you gotta turn off. Uh, I would recommend turning off all other programs when when you're even on Discord when you're streaming. That way, you're not, you know, killing your computer. Yeah, everything's off. <clears throat> like I turn off my mail. I turn off my. Um, I have right now. I have Photoshop, and I have. Uh, OBS, Discord. Yeah, that's still a lot. You know what's funny um, regarding Photoshop? Adam Hughes, I think, learned at a very early stage in Photoshop with a mouse. And then, of course, the technology advanced, but he, he found it difficult to move to a later version of Photoshop because all of his um, all of his presets and all that stuff, the, um, the keystrokes and everything are all different. Yeah. So in order to not have to endure another learning curve, he just stayed with and, you know, yeah, and it was working. And I think eventually he had to you know, get a Cintiq with a stylus and all that stuff. But I think he held off for as long as he could because, you know, it still works. Um, anytime you restart, like all the the shortcuts and everything are different. It's just yeah. kind of a pain to relearn everything. And my, my left hand is uh, on the keyboard. I have a keyboard down here. And so my left hand's on the keyboard while my right hand is drawing. And so I'm toggling with my left hand um, between uh, in and out of uh, um, different. Uh... I think it's funny also, you told me that I think a lot of um, colorists, when you want to select an area, you choose a lasso tool and then you lasso around it and then you dump color into it. But yeah, that's, you, that's uh, like because saying. Yeah, you would uh, just take the pen and make it really, really fat and just scribble in the whole space and color it in by hand. <laughs> yeah, because I'm like, to me, it's like, I'm just, because I'm going to, I'm going to add in, but then I'm going to basically carve back out. So uh, it's like when I wash a car, I like to use my hands to wash the car because I like to feel the, the curves of the car uh, as opposed to just, you know, using a, a brush or whatever. It's almost like, almost like sculpting. Because I can always, what I have right now, I don't, you can't really, I have the, I like a beige color I'm using as a shadow, uh, I'll set on multiply. Um, and then I toggle back and forth. If you can look on the far left side, um, between that and white, white becomes, because this layer is multiply, white, uh, becomes like an eraser without oh, having the switch between a pencil and eraser I'm just switching between colors okay so um, the base skin tone underneath is a flat uh, flat color yeah and then 
the shadow, you're using a presser sensitive um, stylus so that when you press harder, it gets darker. Yeah. And then when you do it, so that way you can get shadows that are modulated and softer um, and have, uh, well, they get darker when you press down and then they can fade into the, the skin um, using pressure. So the shadows are on a, on a second um, multiply layer. layer. So yeah, so now you have, it's like having two pieces of saran wrap. One is just the shadows. And uh, so you can see in some of them, like the with the shadow layer, you can see through the shadow itself, then through the base layer, and then all the way down to the, you know, the the original ink lines underneath. Um, so he wants to know how to do pressure. Well, you know, your your stylus, um, you can set it to be uh, pressure sensitive by choosing a certain brush. Like some brushes are just um, one flat. Like when you if you touch it lightly, it'll just be 100% black. But you can choose a brush that is pressure sensitive, so that when you touch it very lightly, it's almost like a very light airbrush. And then when you when you press down hard, then it's kind of like pouring on the airbrush until it, it sprays really dark. And that way, you can get shadows that kind of come in and out of um, darkness. Especially like with Bernard, I mean, I think there's a couple of ways to get that. Um, that lighter to darker shadow type thing. One of the ways you can do it is a lasso the area and then use an airbrush to spray in. Um, and then there's also just doing that, I guess it's called a chiroscuro where you kind of lasso, uh, lasso the different shade layers and, and then kind of, I guess it looks like a topographical map, you know, you oh, carve then, it up. That yeah, way. so you go back and forth, basically deduction. This so is this, uh, is for, this brush for is pros only. Yeah, this, this brush is called hard round pressure opacity. It's one of the general brushes that comes with uh, Photoshop. I mean, I, I bought uh, Kyle's brushes. Is it Kyle's brushes that he has like a whole set for like a hundred some? I think it's like a hundred some bucks. He has all these artistic brushes like paint, watercolor, oil paint, pencil. But right now I'm just using hard round pressure opacity that comes with Photoshop. It's one of the preset brushes. The only difference is in the brush settings, I've changed it to shape dynamic. I've clicked on shape dynamics and made it pen pressure. Otherwise, without the shape dynamics pen pressure, I won't get a thin. You'll just notice I'm not getting a thinner line. It's just whatever size that brush is. But if I turn on the pen pressure, I can go thin thin to thick. It's a little slow right now, but I can just... Oh, that's cool. Then occasionally I'll, I'll go in with a gradient, you know, if I wanted to just hit something. Yeah, you know, you'd be surprised. Like, you would think if you're, especially if you're coloring, uh, like, a female form, you would think that it's 90% airbrush. But really, the airbrush, I think, is rarely ever used in coloring comics um i just don't think it's i think even adam hughes he rarely uses the airbrush i think just to put in some like um some fades or whatever in the end but uh i think what he does is mostly like the lasso thing where he would lasso the highlight and then and then you know make it lighter and then kind of step down so if you actually look at adam hughes um like one of those female faces and you zoom in far enough you zoom in like close enough, it looks like a paint by numbers. But you, you zoom out and then your eye kind of sees it as a smooth gradient. So, you know, you're not looking for like satin smooth transitions. It, it doesn't really matter in, in comics, it doesn't really help. So a lot of times like what Bernard has going on now, there's pretty much hard edge uh, border between the shadow and the light. Uh, you back off a little bit and then your eye just, your mind's eye kind of closes it together and, and makes sense of it all. And um, the the airbrush can kind of look too soft sometimes. And what I'm doing too is now I'm going in, I'm reducing the size of the brush. So I'm see, coming in and carving out some some details. So this is like erasing the shadow. Yeah. Kind of. With with white paint because this is on a multiply layer. Yeah. So it's effectively erasing. 
so it looks like you can work back and forth between erasing and putting down more and so you can it's basically like uh, sculpting so this is where uh, the artistic ability comes in like you have to really know where where those shadows go that, that's kind of the hard part but a lot of times if someone doesn't really know uh, how those shadows actually fall over the form they'll just get the airbrush and back off and just spray <laughs> and hoping that airbrush would make it look sort of sort of real uh, but I mean it's a tool it can't it can't draw for you so this is where um, uh, the drawing ability comes in Sean you still, you're, you're, you're using a tablet no I, I have a Cintiq with a stylus what when did you get a Cintiq well I mean Julia called you <laughs> and asked uh, oh right I gave her all the specs on what, what yeah you? It says she got whatever you you said. It's a twenty-two HD. Oh yeah. Right. Actually, when you were on the twenty-two HD, I was on the old twenty-one, so you had a better setup than me. But now, now I upgraded. So you still have the the pencil shading underneath, like. Uh, what happens to that? Do you colorize it or get rid of it? Uh, I think I still have it. I'm still going to keep it. You know, it looks all right. Yeah, it I, gives I, it a little texture. What I can do is, because uh, this is what the, <clears throat> you know, I've added the, turned it into a color. I mean, this still looks nice if I did it this way. Yeah, that, I mean, I was asking, always asking about removing the holding line. Um, I think there's an idea that real people like real life doesn't have outlines right yeah. so there's a tendency to want to get rid of it but you know in in comics the drawings in comics especially on the interiors you're sort of like a half step between <clears throat> real life and uh and like basically text in a book i mean the the words in a book are all black letters on a white page and that's it's like a code that you kind of <clears throat> you kind of decode to get the meaning <clears throat> so um if you were to take all the the ink lines out of a on the interior of a comic you'll have problems because i, mean, I guess it'd be like a fumetti where you're using tiny photographs um <clears throat> you'll quickly lose clarity and then it might look kind of like a all browned out kind of muddy so <clears throat> anybody think this looks kind of like a I think this is kind of like what um, you can see. Some comic book artists might might be doing this. This is very similar to what some guy's work looks like, right? In terms of the the mixture of the line line art and the color, do you know what I'm talking about? I forgot the guy's name. <laughs> Like like a Linneal U or something. Like you can tell that yeah, Linneal probably does some of this stuff where he does uh, he's drawing in pencil, and then he's if he's coloring, he's just going straight to color. Um, and also right now I'm using a different um, I'm using a different tan color. I think what you were saying earlier too about before you cut off was, uh, you know, like women, women when you're drawing women faces, you want to try to minimize the amount of lines, right? Oh yeah, I mean it's Drew Struzan would draw the women's faces using a brown, a, like a flesh-colored pencil. Um, yeah, I mean. It's part, I guess, you know, keeping the lines out of there. I think too many lines might l make them look older, or you know, um, their faces look more chiseled. Like men, uh, you tend to draw a lot of lines, and that's okay. Uh, male characters. Yeah, another thing that Drew Struzan does is after he sprays on the uh, the skin color. Uh, and the colors of everything else with an airbrush, he would uh, take this gigantic toothbrush <laughs> and then kind of like spatter, like black paint, 
red paint, blue paint, until the whole thing is like covered with with like speckled dots. Um, and it makes it look very real because I think um, otherwise everyone will look like they're you know like they have dolphin skin. So to make it look like a to have that that skin texture, you just sprays all these dots on it. By the way, guys, uh, sorry, sometimes I miss some of the stuff that you guys type. So I still got to, like, get used to reading and working. So um, <laughs> we got to get the super chats going. Well, I mean, yeah, that. But, uh, you know, because I, I, I was I rewatched the, the each stream just to see if there's areas where we need to improve. Yeah, that, that's supposed to be my. I'm supposed to read the chats to you. So sometimes Sean, you're I, fired. I get lazy. I get let me lazy. Let me disconnect Sean's audio. <laughs> yeah. No, but uh, you know, it's, uh, we just bear with us because uh, I saw sometimes, uh, especially last stream, some people had some questions or they're making some comments, and then um, they are kind of glossed over. So I think right now the light source for Wonder Woman on this piece. Uh, it's kind of coming from like right here, right? Did you see, Sean? Like that's kind oh. of like the light source. Yeah, yeah. From the front and to her left shoulder, yeah. over her left shoulder. So everything in that respect, um, I wanna if I, as I'm sh creating the shadows. Um, oops. Um, I wanna. Uh, Oh, Crispy Papa said you have the echo going. Again? There's the echo again. All right, what about now? Echo? Did you see echo? Is there echo now? Dude, is that like a long white beard hair coming out of your yeah, mustache? Right here, yeah, right here. Yeah, it looks like it's like it's like three inches long. <laughs> All good now. Yeah, I mean, you're not supposed to cut it, right? It's... Yeah, it's good. Good luck, right? I mean, if you cut it, then all your money goes away or something like that. I don't know. So pretty soon you're gonna be like Pyme, you know? It's it's all white, and you can kind of fiddle with it, and then. No, it's just this, just just this one piece. There's just like this one, one or two. There's like two. It's like two of them. Everything else is black. It, was, it used to be brown too. You can just hit it with a sharpie, right? <laughs> yeah, there you go. Me and Kevin said the same thing. I can hit it with a sharpie, really. Yeah, but then, do but it then that'll screen. be like super black, and then the rest will be like kind of brownish. <laughs> I don't know, man. Does Kevin have a beard? I mean, have you tried it on your own beard? Pubic hair does not count. Have you tried it on your own beard? Well, ask, ask Steve. I mean, you know, usually like when you're drawing these things too, right? The, most of the... Most of the attention and detail gets placed on the face. <laughs> and then the rest of the body is like... Choo, 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 doom, I'm done. How do I make it so that it doesn't lock when I zoom out? That's one thing with this new Photoshop is that I'm, I'm sure of. This is the way you're talking about in terms of Adam Hughes moving to the newer Photoshops. I don't know how on this Photoshop, how I'm able to, you know, when I zoom out in the old previous versions, I could still move it around. But now in this version, somehow it's locked into that position. And I haven't figured out how to unlock it. I don't know what just happened there. Yeah, this is a little, a little, a little Linnell. It's looking great. 
Thanks, Sean. You notice that there's no airbrush at all. I mean, you, you really don't need it. I think actually the airbrush would actually hurt it a lot. Um, I, I think one of the problems with airbrush, uh, Photoshop is a photo retouching tool, basically. So you can use an airbrush on a real photograph because everything is gradations and you got to try to match the gradation. In a comic book, you have outlines. So how can you have like an outline around a figure and then have airbrush going on inside? It's like kind of jarring. Um, also, there's this thing in a photograph called anti-aliasing anti where um, I guess it's um, the borders of your body can kind of mix back and forth with the background. Um, they'll kind of trade pixels so it kind of is like a little bit blurry. In comics, you don't really do the anti-aliasing. There's a hard break between the background and the figure and hard break between their clothing and their skin. So there's hard breaks all over. When you start using airbrush inside for the skin, it doesn't quite match. Um, so, you know, this is, at this level, a perfectly acceptable way to color a comic. You know, it's, it looks like a paint-by-numbers up close, but then uh, your mind's eye when you back off, and then the printing process itself kind of... Um, kind of blurs it all together and, and makes it look look real. All right, on the, the next stream, you're going to take a Sharpie to that white hair, right? <laughs> uh, <clears throat> only if only if Kevin wins. If Kevin doesn't win, there's no Sharpie. And ideally, if you guys are doing this, um, maybe you have some kind of reference. Right now, I'm just kind of going off of memory and uh, what looks good. Yeah, I think kind of the way that we would learn, like if you're using reference over and over again and you're coloring a woman's face over and over again, you find out that, like, you know, I'm shading that cheekbone again the same way I've done this over and over again. And here's that highlight that appears on this side of the forehead like it does all the time. And you kind of get used to these things kind of appearing in the same place repeatedly. After a while, you don't need a reference anymore. You kind of know where it all goes. But yeah, I would never do this without a uh, reference. So uh, Daroka asks, how does one get to do covers for comics? I guess you just have to be really damn good, right? Well, I mean, covers is, a, is one of the most sought after positions, right? Cover artist. Um, yeah. In some ways, it's easier. In some ways, it's harder. But it definitely is. Um, there's a lot of people out there who can do covers, but they can't do the interiors. Yeah. There used to be... It used to be probably the most difficult thing to do. And so everyone wants to do it. And um, I used to discourage a lot of young younger artists to shoot for being a cover artist to begin with. Uh, mostly because uh, back then the industry um, there weren't a lot of variant covers there were some but not like a lot there are a lot more variant covers today um, also you're competing against like if I'm drawing my book I want to draw the cover you know I'm surprised Sean they haven't given you any covers on Batman Beyond yet they should you should ask for it well, I mean, um, well, there's the thing is, there's only one. Well, I mean, there's not only one cover because there's variants, but um, you know, I have a hard time finishing a book, so that's twenty pages, and the last thing I need is like one more thing to do. And doing a cover is like doing three or more or four more pages, so you really it's hard to split up the chores on the inside, but you can split up the chores for the covers, and then there's also like a lot of great painters out there, and I'll let them do the covers. So my covers are done by Dustin. That's when yeah. so yeah and then they're great so you know, I, I have no complaint i do covers for other people i do covers mostly for xenoscope and sometimes for dynamite um yeah. but when you get one of those kids who say like well i 
you know, what I want to do is the covers, because, um, and that sounds kind of childish in a way. It's like saying, you know, the same kind of person who says that says, like, I want to get a job uh, testing video games. Like, I don't do the program or anything, but I want to get paid a lot to play all the games, and I'll tell the people if their games are good or not, what I like about it, and what they should change, and then I want I want a hundred thousand dollars for that. So, well, good luck. I mean, everyone wants that job. It's, it's like I also want to be a porn star. Well, I'm, I'm not really, but you do. That, <laughs> but it's like one of those things. I mean, it's just really immature to think that way. Um, you got to so, get better tech equipment if you want to do that. <laughs> you don't want your computer to freeze like right at the moment of like, oh, and then it fr- freezes and then we lose the money shot. <laughs> okay. But yeah, I mean, but yeah, there's you wouldn't believe like how many people who do covers can't do the interiors. Because um, the interiors are all about storytelling. And the covers are just basically, when you go to college and you learn illustration, that you're always learning, you know, to do that stuff like Norman Rockwell. It's just like an, an image. You spend a lot of time on one image, but then the the interiors are really where you need. Interiors are a real man's job. I mean, you got to, and then the covers are kind of like you're like armchair generals, right? You, you get all the glory, you, you get all the money and everything, but I mean, you didn't, you weren't in the trenches. And that's what the the in, interiors are where it's at. So. You don't get to engage storytelling in the cover that much, um, so I find it to be, you know, it's it's great if you can get it. You can sell a lot. You can make as much as the guy who does the entire interiors. <laughs> um, but well, it's two different. It's two different mediums. I mean, we talked about the difference between a supermodel and an actor, right? Um, uh, both can wait, be Kevin attractive. Is, Oh, sorry. Go ahead. What's up, Kevin? Oh, Kevin has a question. I think he's been asking for a while the um, Discord for your channel. You guys want to jump on the Discord? There's the text Discord. Let me send this. But there's a difference between an actor and a and a model. Right? A model can do a single single image, single picture. Um, can look pretty. Tell a story with a single image. But acting uh, in a film, two different things, two different skill sets. You can look pretty. You can be attractive, right? But very. You ever notice like why some supermodels never made it as an actor, right? <laughs> but with that said, these days um, it is actually a little bit easier to get. Uh, work as a cover artist because of social media if you're able to have a following um, provide you know say hey look I can get you X amount of eyeballs right on, on your piece I mean what's the it's like a huge controversy right now over a Wonder Woman cover no the rooster teeth cover yeah yeah and um, so I do know like they not specifically for the Rooster Teeth cover but for other cover artists um, you know if you have an Instagram following uh, if you have an Instagram account and you're posting up really good work and there's a lot of people that are liking it and there's a lot of people that are um, and you happen to be, you know, fairly popular, that will actually boost up your chances of getting cover work. And it's easier to manage a cover artist than it is an interior cover interior artist because, you know, it's just a single image. You're running through a bunch of layouts and then finishing it. Whereas an uh, interior artist, there's a lot more. It's a different skill set, but it's it's a little bit more difficult. So it is, it is easier nowadays than compared to back in the '90s and early 2000s. Um, I'd say in the last four or five years, 
Um, yeah, there's like a Korean guy. I forgot his name. Not Kim Jong Ji, but there's another guy that's been doing a bunch of covers. Um, and again, Marvel, DC, and, and uh, all the other major publishers, they have a lot of uh, variant covers. Not just like retail incentive covers, but um, so that market has opened up to the social social media. It's crazy. I think um, without the variant covers, I don't think the companies will be profitable. The variant <laughs> so covers for DC is a significant amount of uh, revenue, and it's not 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 talking about retail. Value, but I mean, uh, not not talking about retail ins retailer incentive covers, just the variant covers themselves. You know, I did the new new Superman variant covers, and um, for DC, you can you can order. You don't have to buy X number of issues to get a variant cover. You can just order. Your store can just order. You know, they want to order two or three of the variant covers instead of the regular cover. They can do that. And I think that's helped the industry. Sean, how is it working doing covers for like, uh, you do a lot of covers for, for other companies? For Xenoscope? Yeah. Um, I guess it's like, it's like any other cover. I mean, the, the hardest thing is, I mean, I'll be honest, I don't read the books. So they're giving me these um, cover concepts and I don't know who I'm drawing. And yeah, I try to do as much research as possible. Um, but I, you know, I like it when the covers sometimes can be so open in terms of, like a lot of times Diamond will say just like, well, just draw anything you want. Like this is Red Sonja. You're doing a Red Sonja cover. Uh, just make it really cool. I was like, well, what's the story about? It's like it doesn't really matter. Just draw what you got. And that's that's so wide open that it's kind of hard to uh, get anything going. Um, but Zenoscope will tell you like, this is happening in New Orleans, and it's in uh, there's this these characters, and and they actually say exactly what they want on the cover which is i guess most artists don't like it but i can just take that and start hit the ground running with sketches and get it going right away um and then for me that's just maybe like a a day or two of just <laughs> a lot of I, I guess i like um olivier coipel so when there's a, a gray area i <laughs> do lots and lots of hatching Hatching over 50% of the cover. Do you, do you color your own covers? I don't. Um, this guy named Ivan uh, Ivan Nunez is a really good colorist. So he does all of them. Uh, I think it's, you know, by the time it gets to the colors, I've been on that cover for sometimes two and a half days. And I don't want it to go on any longer. So <laughs> I'd like to step off and give the color to someone else. You should let Marcello color some of your covers. Well, I, th I thought that maybe you you had them all, <laughs> and you were kind of yeah, hoarding able, him because he's able to do stuff. <laughs> he's great. I remember that Greg Capullo sold one cover for fifty k. Um, yeah, wow. he didn't want to sell any of them, so in order for him to part with it, it was that's how much it was. So, which cover was that? That was that bat was that Batman one with um. I think there was like almost like a big dog pile on it. Mm. <laughs> right now, I think this is maybe a little too intense, but uh, it's a little too angular. You, to, like, you know what it's like? It's like Phil Noto. Yeah. It also create a mask. Yeah, the good thing about working in layers is, um, like, if you think the shadow is is either too dark or has too much blue or red, you can just select that layer and then drop the opacity and uh, adjust the color hue. <clears throat> so it's it's infinitely. I mean, you can just work forever on it and keep messing with it. Kevin put some stuff on the Discord. Yeah, Kevin put some. He put some pages up. Yeah, 
his beard. How was the uh, how was the boot camp? Let's get back to that. I'm curious. That's some nice work there. If you want, yeah, I think. Oh, go ahead, Sean. So sorry. Oh, uh, I was just saying that that Greg Capullo cover that sold for fifty grand is because he doesn't sell. Like I think uh, our Steve Masarski, our old boss, told us don't. And Barry Windsor Smith also said, don't sell your artwork because uh, hey, one day it'll be worth a lot. And I. I sold. I sell a lot of stuff. I've been in, the, in this industry for a long time. I sold everything. Um, my work is not worth that much now because it's so much of it out there. I did this really elaborate uh, kind of like House of X type uh, cover quality piece with Magneto and uh, actually, I mean, you can actually see it on my Instagram. Magneto and and one of the cuckoo twins or whatever. Um, I thought it was a really nice piece, and then auctioned it off to help out a store. And the store told me it sold for 200 bucks. What? 11 by 17. It's a glorious piece. I, I mean, it's one of my favorite covers. I'm mean, not a cover, but it's it's a commission that I did. It's really quite amazing. And then uh, it sold for 200 bucks. But this, that Sean Chen stuff is out there all over the place. <laughs> it's, and it's hard, uh, hard to get a fetch a high price for that stuff anymore. Yeah, you know, this I would have said a minimum, but the store was selling. I think the store also doesn't really deal with art collectors. It's mostly, um, I mean, he sells Funko Pops. So he put it up there, like, this is a Sean Chan piece. Um, and it didn't go for that much. So, you know, I just made up the difference. I said, I want to give you a thousand bucks for your store because it's in trouble. I'm going to give you these two pieces of artwork, artwork for sale. And I'm hoping that it, that it that'll do it, but I don't think so. So whatever... Um, is you know whatever is the the balance I'll just cut you a check for. <laughs> so I had to give the guy like six hundred bucks. Is this the store that's down the block from you? No, no, that's they're actually doing quite well. Um, this is a store that's on Long Island. It's really hurting. Maybe I can find that one. Let's see. Um. Hey, Kazuto's here. You know where this guy was? I think we're coming to the close of this. Okay, hopefully that worked. I just put an Instagram address on there. So that's a picture of the cover um, that I did. Another cover was a piece of artwork I did for the auction. That could be had for 200 bucks. It's criminal. Oh, Les Dudas is here. Who? Uh, Les, do you know Les Dudas? Les Dudas. A, Les Dudas? Yeah, let's do this. Bum, 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 bum. He, he's a good man. Who's let's do this? He's a local guy. Um, actually, he, he, he runs a, I guess it's like a channel that um, where he kind of documents conventions and also helps them out. I don't know. I don't know what you do for a living, let's do this, but you do um, work behind the scenes quite a bit. Yeah, your Jimbo is two figures, 200 bucks. <laughs> That's what my stuff is worth now. And you see that one. Um, mostly because of the sheer amount of stuff I have out there. Oh, that was 200 bucks? That was. That's at least a thousand. 
Yeah, well, I would like it to be a thousand, but I think um, I just have a reputation. When when you see these like uh, art, um, I guess they're like the secret Facebook groups of, of art collectors. There's one thing they always say is like prices are too high. Every, everyone thinks high, but they always say Sean Chan is still reasonable. And I have a reputation out there for doing work for nothing. Um, sort of like showing up on a friend's stream and giving out artwork for nothing, you know, for, for the spin of a wheel, <laughs> that, that kind of thing. Oh, come on, Sean. Let's change that. <laughs> it's never too late. How are we doing here? Uh, Golf Boy Sunday. There is uh, on that Instagram that Batman Beyond is what's being given away today. So also when you flat, the cool part is that, uh, oops, I think I colored on the flat layer. You can just go in and select the flats in theory. I actually goofed and forgot and I, I think I colored some of this on the on the flat layer. Yeah, that's one thing about flatting is if you save that flat layer, you can um, select the shirt instantly just by clicking on it and it'll just it'll give you just the shirt or the the, the face. Um, before before that was possible, I remember in the old days of image when you're working on something and then it's it's all colored up and everything and you want to select the whole face to make it darker, you used to have to re-lasso. Um, and you have to re-lasso everything. Um, it took forever. So that was a big game changer is being able to have a, a flat layer set on invisible so you can't see it. So you can always uh, click on whole objects no matter what you did to color it. You can go back to selecting the whole object and, and treating it as a one item. Um, let's see, about that, uh, yeah, um, someone said it kind of looks like Olivier Coipel. I'm highly influenced by Olivier Coipel, and, and what I like about his stuff is that um, there's a certain like um, atmospheric perspective. So when you do the thing where you fade out the feet with a lot of hatching, it looks like they're standing in fog, which is um, something you usually don't see in comics, because comics is usually so um, so flat. So you can get some sort of like painterly atmospheric feel by sometimes blurring shadows together or um, you know just doing the opposite by blending the lights together and also fading things in and out I think anyone can share their Instagram if they want and like sometimes streams allow it so yeah go ahead it's up Let's, to Bernard yeah yeah okay. you guys can post feel free to I mean as long as it's not like porn <laughs> Um, so Kazoo, the, the pen I use is the, um, it's, I, I think they're uh, pit pens from Faber-Castell, and their sizes are, uh, the one I use the most is the XS, which is extra small, and then the S, and then the fatter one is the F. So the F is usually for the outlines, um, and then all of those really fine hatching stuff is the XS. Um, you know, the hatching, I found that if you have like, um, if I was drawing that Wonder Woman and it was in black and white, her, I want to get across the idea that her skin is like really smooth and light colored. So you leave that open, white. But then you look at the background behind her, it's also open and white. I mean, if it was a black and white um, drawing. Uh, so then you kind of have to use your imagination to kind of convince yourself that her shoulder is light and smooth. But one way you can make it in an ink drawing, um, make her skin look really smooth and light, is to fill the background with an opposite uh, effect. So then the hatching makes the background darker, obviously, and also the hatching is coarse. So when you put that next to her shoulder, in the negative space behind her shoulder and her neck, her skin becomes like white alabaster and super smooth, and it almost seems to illuminate it. So, you know, once I discovered that, I was like, wow, I gotta do it everywhere. But that's why you spend an entire day just inking and drawing is because you're just filling in the whole area with hatching sometimes.
Wait, Sean, you think we're pretty much done with this? I think yeah, we're I done think with this for great. now. You can always go in and like continue to work on this even more, but do you ever do the Adam Hughes thing of like um red nose, red cheeks? <laughs> So everyone in Alan, Adam Hughes drawing, and a lot of people, like, I think Phil Noto does this too, there's like almost airbrush red on the nose, so they look like they all have a cold, and the cheeks, like they look like they have a cold um, in real life, but then in a comic book, they look just very healthy. So it's like Christmas every day, every year? Like, yes. the weather's, like, like she's coming down with coronavirus? Yes, but you would think it, they look really sick, but then uh, it just looks That's ironically right. really healthy. Right. I created a new layer. Let's make that layer multiply. Let's yes. see how Sometimes think. I just um, circle the nose and then put the slider toward red without even blending it in. It, it still works. Now it's punchline. Yeah, look how healthy she looks. <laughs> that's like a that's a lineal you, Adam Hughes, Phil Noto effect. When you back off, it looks normal when you back off. Up up close, it's a little weird. <laughs> she be drinking. Uh, I should put some eyeshadow on her. That would make it look kind of yeah, I mean, really, she has no blush, no eyeshadow, and her lip is just lip stain, which is, you know, a lot of guys kind of hammer on that stuff because you're kind of immature. But it takes a real man to leave the face very natural. Yeah, Lanil, you draw some really great uh, women. What do you think? No? Yes? No? <laughs> smoky, smoky raccoon eyes. Yeah, look at it. <laughs> yeah, that's better. It's the glamour. I mean, you never on the face go to 100% white on any of the pinpoint highlights? No. Nope. Sometimes like the tip of the nose or in the eyeball. Nope. Oh, maybe an eyeball. Yes, eyeball. Let's do that. Yeah, you know, sometimes if you don't leave, put the um, highlight in the eyeball, they can look kind of corpse-like. Or like, you may not notice it, but then when you put it in there, all of a sudden, they're like, alive. That's a good call there, Sean. Forgot. <laughs> crazy. I want to get a pure white on there. Oh, so you have this, um, like a, a glare effect on it. Yeah, that's this, uh, this layer here. Remember, uh, I drew the light, remember I drew the light bulb layer? Oh, yeah. Right? And yeah. I just, you know, yeah, it's like atmosphere. It's, um, yeah, it makes it yeah, really cool. I don't really like to use white, so... Um, I think it's better if we use the color. Yeah, um... <laughs> Putting the spectral highlights and eye makes it look wet. And also another thing is like Jim Lee sometimes does this thing. I mean, there's not much space in, in between the eyelids to fit the eyeball itself because you're only drawing part of the eyeball. But Jim Lee will also cut out the bottom part of the eye, like the bottom half of the eyeball. And what that does, it, it oh, makes yeah. the eyes look wet. Like there's like tears in there. It makes it makes the person look healthier. Um, it's really cool. Really neat effect. Never really thought about that. Do that. Can we do that? Well, you can't really do that on this one. Maybe. Yeah, I, I don't think you can. I don't think you can ever do it. But somehow he Let me does try it. So draw so little of the eyeball in there. Let me try this. Get the smoke in this. Get this little, little teardrop in there. I mean, we can just keep going. <laughs> and then look when you pull back. 
Yes. I think also. I like it. Her eyes are a little flat. But you see how it looks like um, it's healthier and, and wetter? Like, it's a weird illusion, but these are all just um, pixels on a computer. But what you do with them, uh, the illusion of real material is kind of undeniable. Like, those eyes all sudden, they become glassy and they, they have soul to them. Here's another trick. I'm gonna open. A, I have a bunch of textures that I've uh, painted or scanned in, and uh, this is gonna make it pop. Textures. Really? Check this out. Bye. That's for the background? No, just for her. Oh, for her. Yeah. I don't know if I like this. Push it down a little bit. Give it a little, a little bit of it. So. Yeah, um, Kazuda wants to know what you think about Jorge Jimenez. Um, I think he's he's fantastic. You know, he's <laughs> he's a great uh, cartoonist. Like he goes beyond just drawing realistically and exaggerates in all the right ways. Um, I think it's in, entirely digital. Yes. All which of is weird because it's all digital. Yeah. It looks very. It looks like traditional stuff. But yeah, it's got to be all digital. Um, but yeah, the way he draws punchline, like I think he designed her, but also the way he draws her is great. All right, let's start setting up the uh, wheel. Should we start setting you say up you were wheel? also giving something away, giving away drawing. Am I? <laughs> he told me on Discord. I guess I could. I was gonna wait. Or you gotta color in that white hair. Either give a give away a drawing or color in that white hair on your beard. I was gonna, I was gonna give away on another. One. Yeah, you know, you really when I mean, you do digital stuff, there's no original art. But I suppose people try to get around that by saying that they're gonna print out just one, guarantee just one, and you'll have it, and it's as good as an original. <laughs> I've seen people yeah. do that. Yeah. yeah, Jorge does that. One print of each page um, on the honor system. But, I mean, how many people will still consider that to be on the level as a of a piece of traditional art? Well, people buy it. What do you think? I mean, it could be a little, it could could go a little darker in some areas. She got tan. Let me find another another texture. So that texture you put on her body? Yeah. See? Oh wow. So this is kind of just like noise, right? I mean, you're basically creating noise. Yeah. So now it looks like we painted it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you see Phil Noto do that a lot. Um, a lot of times if you are working too slowly and carefully <clears throat> on a drawing, it ends up being very um, stiff feeling. So you get some quick brush strokes and lay it in there. Yeah, okay. It kind of livens it up again. <clears throat> can you see the, you can see the strokes, right? Yeah, look at it. With? Yeah, it looks good enough Without. that you can, you can print it out and then sell it to someone as an original traditional piece. <laughs> yeah. Print it on like, on watercolor paper or something. All right. 
Yeah, cover recreations are a big thing. I mean, <clears throat> um, I know Bob Layton does a lot of them. Do you guys buy artwork on this? Uh... I'm just going in and adding some more details from here. I'm using a color picker. Um, to select from. Keep working on this, but it's getting late. We're at the two hour mark. Close. That's okay. great. All right. Let me see. Oh, Go Boy Sunday says she kind of looks like a sister. <laughs> oh, is your sister single? <laughs> Go Boy Sunday, you want an extra slice? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, but Golf Boy Sunday is in Canada, right? <laughs> All right, logging into Streamlabs. I wonder if they keep the wheel. Doesn't matter. See, Sean, I should give you my login. That way you can set up the wheel. Oh, but yeah, I mean, I know I could technically do it, but I can't set up that wheel the way you do. I, I <laughs> like doling out slices, taking them away. I don't know. I can't do that stuff. Okay, uh, let's go down the list. How many people we got? This is for the, the Batman Beyond. This is Going. for or a digital printout of one digital printout of that Wonder Woman. <laughs> Batman Beyond. Batman Beyond. Let's do the Batman Beyond. Um. Okay. So uh, this um, coloring you did. How close is that to the um, what you would do on a cover? I mean, is it basically what you would do for a comic book uh, cover? A comic book cover would be a little bit cleaner, maybe a little bit tighter. Um, I mean, I spend more time on it. Like, we just spent, like, maybe an hour, hour and a half, hour, 15 minutes. So probably spend a lot more time. I mean, there'd be a lot more layers. You know, the background, there's no, like, there's nothing on the background, right? Um What's, it's a nice color for a background. <clears throat> is that like a complementary color? Or what do you call it? <clears throat> when the color is the opposite uh, of the color? Well, she always has like, like a blue, like a blue thing. You know, it's like flying, right, in the sky. There you go. I guess. <clears throat> Okay, uh, so how many people we got? I'm going to run down the list and then I guess Wait, I, I want you to up. make that background a, a rave. A rave? Yeah. Is that still a, th are those, is that still a thing, a rave? Yeah, I mean, a rave. We go back 10 years ago to find a rave. Uh, I remember when... We used to go to raves. <laughs> okay. All right. Wheel. See, this is the wheel setup. All right. Oh, that's what I need to add. 
Got to add the wheel. Crappy. <laughs> you can see the wheel setup chart here. Uh, browser source. <laughs> That's what I forgot to add. Are you on on some other stream? You gotta talk about your raves. I, I don't know what the hell a, a rave looks on inside. Cause I have never went, but I think in your day you did you went to some raves. What does it say? Seems you've merged your Streamlabs accounts. Please re-add your widget links. Uh, you may have to write down everyone's name and pull out of a hat. What the f? I gotta do it from my other computer. Like if I spin wheel. You hear that? Did you hear the gotta 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 gotta? Yeah. <laughs> Launch. Okay. Did you hear the birds try to mimic that? The birds try to butter 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 butter. All right, let me try <laughs> this again. There it is. Voila. Magic. Yes. Okay, and so. That would begin the uh, worst part of the show. Okay, Yoji. Luke is here. Right. Get rid of Suli. Suli's not here. All right, where's Suli? She's got a there. horse drawing and she took off. Exactly, man. She got her drawing and she bailed. She's like. <laughs> Let's do this. Do we add let's do this? Uh, hell yeah. All right, let's do this. Let's do this. Let's do that. I hope let's do this wins. I, I, I owe let's do this a, a commission for like, oh, is it a year now? <laughs> Does it, would this count for the, would this count as a commission or <laughs> is that separate? Cause it's like that Seinfeld episode where like Jerry said, I'll get you, I'll buy you a meal. So we said, Jerry, buy me a meal and then Jerry took him to soup, and it was like, that doesn't count as a meal. That's just soup. <laughs> uh, okay. Elkabong, is Elkabong here? Is Veritas? Veritas, are you here? Isaac is not here. I didn't see him. Sorry, Isaac's from India. Just saved us 50 bucks. <laughs> yeah, I am not gonna send to India. Um, is LeBron here? Let me let me put in Kobe instead. He requested Kobe. Um, Steve. B Blair. Uh, Blair's back. Barry. Okay. Um, who else? Golf boy's back. Golf boy was not on here. Golf boy. I think what I'll do too is um. So we got a bunch of people that have won twice. Uh, if you win, you can. If you win one for one month, for one month you are re relegated to one slice. The rest of that, rest of that, let's say two weeks. Rest of the two weeks, you can only have one slice, right? Because um, right now it's like you go back to one and then you you start accumulating slices again. So maybe like we we'll give you like a week, week and a half. Um, delay. That way, other people get a better chance of winning. Uh, is El Cabone here? Is Kobe here? Kobe, Kobe here? Kazuto, I saw Kazuto earlier. Is Kazuto yeah, still he's, here? He's still here. Damn, that's Brazil. Well, you're saying that <laughs> you're saying this. Kevin, is Kevin here? Kevin, yes, yeah, Kevin P. West. Crispy, Crispy went to sleep, but we'll keep Crispy on here. <laughs> is this the Australia crispy? Way? No, crispy, crispy egg roll. Aus okay. Australia crispy is on here too. Okay. Okay. So let me uh, let me up update this. Save settings. All right. So right now, uh, then we gotta up. Okay, Yoji. Yoji won last time, so we have the new rule. If you won last time, you're stuck on one for a week. I mean, you still get a chance to win. Um, Crispy's chiming in from Senegal. All right, uh, Crispy, did you win? Uh, Crispy Papa, Crispy Papa won, so you back down to one. Luke, have you won recently? 
We'll say Luke. Luke, Luke is not here. Luke is not here? Well, Luke is uh, Mr. Joshua. Mr. Joshua's not here? <coughs> Jay Dang, is, yeah, Jay, is Jay Dang here? I thought I saw Jay Dang earlier. Has Jay Dang won? Wei? Wei? Did Wei win something last time? Wei still has not won. Crispy Egg Roll is one. Kevin. Kevin Peace. Kevin, when was the last time you won? Kevin won something before. Um, okay. Kazuto. Kazuto has not won. Kobe. Kobe Bryant bumps up to three. El Cabone. El Cabone's not here, right? Is he here? Have you remember seeing El Cabone? No, he's not okay, here. El Cabone. No El Cabone. Veritas. Is Veritas here? Yeah, Crispy Egg Roll won, won my um, yeah. Faye Valentine. Let's do this. Gets one. Barry gets one. Barry, you get, Barry gets two. He was like here last time. Golf Boy. Golf Boy. Has Golf Boy won already? Wait, Golf Boy's got a hot sister, so we got, you guys, he's got two. <laughs> Hook it up, Golf Boy. Come on. At least the uh, Instagram. Um, we can, we can, we can. Here, all right, check the check the slices. Make sure you got um, crispy papa traded to two woke. J Dang won the scarlet. Okay, yeah. So J Dang, you gotta you gotta come back down. Okay, crispy won the magic. So uh, uh, crispy, which crispy? Crispy papa? No. Crispy egg roll won the magic. Yeah, he's back yeah. down to one. So who won last uh, last night? The um. Faye Valentine. That was. Oh, that was Yoji, right? Didn't Yoji win the Faye oh, Valentine? Yeah, okay, yes, right. Yes. But, yeah. No, I don't need the OnlyFans hookup. I just need an Instagram. You know, slide into the slide into her DM. Okay, let's uh, let's double check this. Anybody else that's on the stream right now? That's been on the stream. You get an opportunity to win. I'll give you a slice if you type something in the comment section. Especially the guys that uh, followed. And uh, has Si Jing been on the slice? Si Jing, how long have you been on this chat? Golf Boy Sunday. <laughs> si Jing. Si Jing, how, how long has you, have, have you been on this uh, chat? Uh, about two minutes two all, minutes all night, no, all night. see jing I, I guess it's been very quiet so uh let's see let's let's see if he can answer a question about early what uh, did we talk about earlier what did we talk about earlier let's see it's so so interesting i forgot uh sean mentioned a couple of artists comic book artists that um color using a lasso this okay don't answer anybody this is only for sieging okay <laughs> sean mentioned a particular artist that when he first started learning photoshop he was using an earlier version of photoshop but then as photoshop began to upgrade into um newer more you know uh better versions he continued to use the old version because he didn't want to learn the new uh whatever keystrokes or whatever who is that artist oh, there you go man oh you got a cj okay all right cj gonna ask cj i guess he earned your spot <laughs> that was pretty recent right wasn't that pretty recent that was like 15 20 minutes ago let's add cj you only get one slice though cj the more you come on the more slices you get all right so if you're on and you don't win Next time you come on, you get like two slices. That's how it works. So it behooves. It works to your favor the more you come on. Uh, Barry, I, I did change the Magic's boob window to be smaller. Okay. Um, oh, and if your birds win, then I send the drawing over to Bernard, and then he uses it as... A liner for the cage and then yeah, we will show right. it with bird crap on it. and the birds poop on it yeah and we throw it out after that right okay all right 
Anybody else? Anybody else want to? Uh, do this background. The Rock Forty Five. The Rock. The Rock. Ashton, you've been here. Okay, sorry, Ashton. Hey, man. Ashton, Ashton's been on here a couple times. Let's give him two. Has Golf Boy won recently? Golf Boy, forgot to ask. We're giving him an extra one because he has a hot sister. They're yeah, just making up rules, you know. Anybody else? This is a uh, updated wheel. The Rock. You're. Uh, you're the white one up top. You're the white slice. There's crispy is the other one. Okay, this is it. Last call. This is for the Sean Chan Batman Beyond sketch. Oh, something just happened there. Look at this. This is bad. It is watercolor too, right? Is that your real blood? Did you punch yourself in the nose and then? <laughs> yeah, that's a watercolor. Golf Boy won the Bizarro. Okay. Golf Boy. Oh boy, you gotta go back down the one. Okay. So far as Luke, Wei, Kazuto, Kevin, and Kobe. Man, Brazil. That's like us gambling too. Okay, let's spin this. Too woke. Uh, too woke. You want to get in on this? Two woke was on here earlier. Two woke one before, but you can get one slice if you want. Okay, he doesn't want it. All right, let's go. Spin the wheel. Ready? Mr. Joshua, actually, Mr. Joshua, that's his third sketch that he's won. But this is for his son. Oh, Luke. It's for his son. Luke's lucky. Goes back down to one. Well, maybe he's, I hope he's a fan of the show. I hope Luke is watching on a separate monitor. Well, house. I mean, a fan of Batman Beyond. Congratulations, Luke. Well, it looks like for the next stream, we got Wei, Kevin, Kazuto, Steve, a.k.a. Kobe. Uh, Wei is in the lead. Wei's won a sketchbook, I think. Right? So... Um, Okay, well, thanks a lot, guys. Let's see if uh, maybe we might be able to stream again tomorrow. Let's tr uh, we'll try to do it a little earlier. Sorry about that today. Uh, just took a long time to set up this uh, thing. Uh, if you guys like the Photoshop, maybe tomorrow I'll color the uh, zealot, right? You think that'd be cool, Sean? Um, <laughs> All right. Well, that puts the pressure on me to come up with another drawing. No, I, I, I got another. I got an extra drawing I give away. I got a. Um, I got a drawing I giveaway. I got a sketch that I've done before. Um, that's kind of sitting around. Um, cool. Well, maybe I'll do it. If I have time, I'll, I'll do something for the stream. Yeah. So, but thanks a lot, guys. Thanks for um, jumping on the stream with us. Yeah. Congratulations, Joshua. Uh, yeah, just um, DM me your address, and I'll get it right, right out to you. Stay safe out there. Um, All right, so maybe see you guys again tomorrow. Yeah, we'll try to do it. This will be like five days in a row.